Okay, so there are many ways to become a software developer online, but I think the best and fastest way to do it in 2023 is to learn full stack web development. And here's why. It has the most demand for jobs, has very good salaries, and yet it is very accessible to learn online in just four to six months with no CS degree required. But I can tell you from experience that it's very easy to get lost as a beginner. It was so difficult to find the right roadmap to focus on. And it was easy to get lost with all of these different things where I didn't know if if I was learning enough or if I was learning too much. And that is why I wanted to make this video. Today, I will give you a full roadmap on all the things you need to learn about full stack development to get your foot in the door in the industry. We will go over a very simple overview of the three parts of full stack development, including what you should learn in each step to be good enough and a step-by-step -step path on how to learn it. And I will even give you one key tip to give you a massive edge in interviews that almost all beginners seem to miss. So what is full stack development? Well, to put simply on the web we have the front end and we have the back end the front end is the visual part of the web that you see on your screen in the case of youtube you can think of the front end as the video that you see in front of you like for example the like button that you can click below if you want to and the back end the magical youtube algorithm that decided that this video right here was the video that they were going to recommend to you and the front end and the back end together alongside something called devops which we'll talk about forms the full stack of web development which is what we're learning today now of course you might worry that even once you learn all of these you will still not be able to get a job but don't worry we'll also talk about that at the end now the first place for you to start with your full stack developer journey is with the front end and the reason you want to start with the front end is that you can build full applications just with the front end, but you cannot really build full projects just with the back end because any project like it needs to have some sort of a visual component. First, let's go over the basics of the front end. And after that, we'll give you an actionable plan on exactly what you need to learn and how to learn it. The first thing you'll be learning are the classics of web development, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML or hypertext markup language is all about defining the structure of the web page, what words, what text, Text, which images and in what order you want all of this to appear. So this right here is the YouTube homepage and what you can actually do to see the HTML that actually makes up this entire front end of the YouTube homepage is that by right clicking on anywhere on the screen, you can click on inspect to open something called the Chrome developer tools. And inside of here, for example, you can find the element that corresponds with these videos in here. And if you go deeper and you can open these tags by just clicking on them right here and you can get as deep as you want. Now this, what you see here is the HTML. So this right here defines what you see on the page, but that is actually not enough because if you just use HTML, your websites would look look like this and that's not ideal because ideally we want to also be able to customize what our websites look like aka is the styling and this is where css comes in now css syntax looks roughly like this and the way it works is that you first define something called a selector and then you define styling below the selector just like this for example you can define colors fonts etc and then using these selectors you can apply some of these styling blocks that you define into some of these html tags that we just saw earlier, either one of them specifically by using an ID selector or a whole bunch of them at the same time using something like class or tag selectors. But this is still not enough because we also want to make our websites interactive and dynamic so that the web page can actually change and sort of respond to what the user does. And this is where JavaScript comes in. For example, when I click on the site menu here on YouTube and it pops out just like this, or when I click on a video and I see all these interactive elements like the like button, for example, on this very video down below click on if you want. Okay, so now you know how to build basic web pages using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now your only problem is how do you get the code that you define to be shipped via the internet to be displayed on someone else's computer screens? And the way this actually happens is that when you publish a web page on the internet, you define something called a URL, which is basically a route that someone else's web browser can navigate to to then request this web page code to be sent to their computer for it to be displayed. And once someone does that, that code is actually shipped directly into your user's browsers every time they open up your web page from something called the website owner's server. And we'll talk about later what that means. And then your user's web browser opens and runs that code on like Google Chrome or Safari or even Edge if you're a peasant. And your browser then renders that code and shows the website that you have coded. 
And this is why you need an internet connection to view web pages because this code actually needs to be shipped from somewhere else in the world in order for you to view that web page. So in your first step, you will learn the basics of these three languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, as well as how to link them together and build basic web pages. Then after you have done that, it is time to throw them all away into a trash can because in 2023, no one actually uses plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Instead, what people use are something called frameworks. For example, React or Next.js. What these frameworks essentially do is they make the process of writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript automatic. So instead of writing all these three languages individually, you can just write React code, which is meant to be an easier way to write web pages. And then the React engine will automatically convert that React code into the plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript script, which is then rendered to actually display the web page. Similarly for styling, no one wants to write plain CSS anymore. So that is why there are styling frameworks called Tailwind that make write the styling easier and then automatically render into the plain CSS behind the scene. But Thomas, why did we need to learn basic HTML, CSS and JavaScript if we were not actually going to use them? Okay, that's a, that's a fair question, actually. So vanilla HTML, CSS and JavaScript are basically like the foundation of the web and frameworks are like a layer on top of them, like an assistant that allows you to write them faster and more easily. But because basically every framework in the front end is built on top of them, in order to use the frameworks and to understand them, you do first need to understand the vanilla front end, unfortunately. Trying to learn a framework straight away is sort of like trying to learn a calculus before you even know how to do basic addition or subtraction even though once you are learning calculus, you just use a calculator to do the basic subtraction and addition anyway. So now it's time to get into the back end. So for the front, you only really have one option to start with, which is what I described. But for the back end, you actually have tons of different options. And these options come in the form of different languages as well as different frameworks for the back end for these different languages. Some of the most popular ones are Python with Django, JavaScript with Node.js, Go, Java, like literally there's so many options. And I honestly wouldn't worry too much about what to pick because once you learn one language and one framework, it's very easy to learn another one straight away because the ideas are very, very similar. I would just focus on learning the ideas, the concepts with whatever language or framework that you pick. But seeing as you're going to worry about this anyway, just start with a popular option like Python, JavaScript, or Go. So once you pick a language or a framework, before diving in, let's first get an overall understanding of what we are actually learning. The way the backend works is that it's essentially all the custom sort of secret logic that the operator of a website or a web app needs to run, like managing users, storing files, handling credit card payment, like all the logic that you don't see as the user, but nevertheless needs to happen behind the scenes for the website to actually work. Again, like for example, the YouTube algorithm. So essentially you can say that my entire YouTube channel success is all in the hands of some backend code. Just to give you another example, this right here is my app Boxio. The front end of the app is this sidebar that you can see on the left that you can open and close as the user. The way this app works is that you can create these boxes for different projects. Let's say this is a box for a video project. And in the future, like files and apps and things like this, you open when you have a box open, will then be automatically opened and closed when I switch to a different box, just like this. They all went away, but when I go back, the same tabs open. When I go to a different box with different things open, boom, different stuff opens up on my screen. Now the front end of this is easy to understand. It's just this sidebar. You can imagine that there's a lot of code sort of behind the scenes. Like you might be asking, okay, how is it that we're able to just open and close tabs Apps from your browser? How is it that we're able to like, for example, link files into these boxes like this or link drive folders? All of that is handled by the backend of our application. And by the way, if you want to download this app, it's completely free and you can do it down below. Subtle plug. So at this stage, your main task is to simply understand what I just told you at a conceptual level and to understand how to set up a server, how to connect a server, which is just a different word for backend, to the front end. And a lot of the common tasks that a backend usually does, like user management, authentication, session, security, all of these topics, you want to just dive into one by one. And once you're at the point where all the things that I just told you make sense and you would know how to implement them in whatever language or framework you're using, that is when you know you're ready to move on to the next step. Now, the easiest way to do this is to simply follow one program that teaches all of this in one place. And at the end, I will give you some options for that. But before that, there is one crucial thing that you still need to understand. And that is the scary world of DevOps. I'm kidding, it's not actually that scary. What it is if you go too deep into DevOps? It's pretty terrifying, actually. 
But here I'm just talking about learning the absolute basics that you need to know. Because I actually think that just learning a bit of DevOps before going into applying for jobs is a massive opportunity to give you a massive advantage over others because most people will not do this. Like most people will go into interviews knowing absolutely nothing about version control, about GitHub, about tools like this that are absolutely crucial tools for developers to use. So here's what you need to know. So to understand what DevOps is, imagine that you built an amazing Lego castle. You want to show it to your friends, but there are some challenges. First of all, it took a lot of steps for you to build your castle and sometimes you made mistakes or you wanted to make some changes and you need to wait to remember how you build it. And once you are at the friend's house, you might want to change the castle or add more parts. You need to remember what changes you made so that next time everything still works well. Now let's think of your Lego castle as like a computer program that you have built, like a full stack website. Now what DevOps is, is like a magical guidebook that helps with all of these things that we just talked about. Just like you need a way to remember how you build your Lego castle, DevOps gives programmers a tool called a version control to remember every step they took to create a program so they can easily go back to a previous step anytime they want. And DevOps also has tools to track changes. Just like you want a way to remember which parts of your Lego castle you and your friend changed. This way, many people can work on the same program or the same website at the same time and make improvements without getting in each other's way. So practically, what you want to learn are the basics of Git and GitHub. And to really impress them, you might even want to learn the basics of tools like Docker or major cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud. And as these are the tools that you will eventually have to learn as you get into the professional world, so you might as well become familiar familiar with them early on to show them that you are ready to take on the task of becoming a full stack developer for them. Now, these are the three key elements you need to become a full stack developer. What you still, of course, need is to actually get a job. That's what most of us want anyway. Now, what you can do is learn all of this on your own and figure out on your own how to get hired on your own. And if you don't have any money, like this is a great way to do that. It can be done. But if you do have some money and you want to invest in yourself and your career to do this faster, what you might want to do is follow one program that takes care of all of this for you. And I'm actually going to give you two options for this right now. The first program, something brand new that my friend Tim from the channel Tech with Tim has been developing for the past six months. In it, he not only teaches you everything we just talked about in one structured program, but crucially, they also offer you career guidance with experienced mentors, tips for interviews, help for polishing your resume, and a dedicated platform where employers can actually find and reach out to you after you complete the program. And this perk is like literally insane. And the reason they're able to do this is because this company, Course Careers, has contacts to a bunch of tech companies who want to hire developers. And because they've vetted and developed the program in such a way that the company is know and trust that whoever goes through the program is good enough to get a job, these companies can just literally get all these pre-vetted candidates from the program directly. And so this program is not cheap, but if you have the cash for it, it's probably the fastest way for you to get a job. And that is why I was actually able to partner with Course Careers to offer this program to you. So from the link below, you can take their free introductory course to software development to see if it's the right fit for you. And if you decide to join the full program, they were also kind enough to give me a special link below that gives you $50 off your first purchase. If you don't have the cash to pay for the full $800 price for that course and you don't really value all the extra things you get, for less than half the price, I do also have my own program, Python Developer Bootcamp, with more than 400 students enrolled where I teach you all of these, including how to get a job, but you will have to apply them on your own. Whichever option you choose, I benefit equally because one of them is mine and for the other one, if you sign up, I get an affiliate fee. So whichever way you go, you also support me at the same time. So just pick whatever fits your preference and your budget the best. And before you get started, you just have one problem left. To get a job, you will also need to pass the dreaded coding interview. Now, this video is too long to talk about it now, but luckily I also previously made a full video on how I personally mastered data structures and algorithms. And you can watch that video right here. And I recommend you do that because you will also need to do that if you actually want to get hired.